Welcome everyone, my name is Zach, and in this video I'm going to explain four reasons that you should not buy the Tesla Model 3 Performance, and why most people should just buy the long range dual motor instead. I was personally trying to decide between these two cars last year, and I ended up choosing the long range dual motor instead of the Performance. I learned a lot through the process of researching the differences between these two cars, and realized that there are a lot of good reasons to not buy the Tesla Model 3 Performance. But I want to start with the two exceptions that I see, so that you don't waste your time watching this video just to realize that it wasn't applicable to you. So the first exception, are you gonna bring this car to the track? Are you actually going to go race this car at a track? No? Keep watching. Next, is this a weekend or a second car? If you answered yes to either of those questions, the Model 3 Performance might be the car for you. If you answered no and are thinking of the Model 3 Performance as being your daily driver, keep watching. Okay, now let's talk about the four reasons to not buy the Tesla Model 3 Performance. So the first reason to not buy the Model 3 Performance is the wheels. The Model 3 Performance comes with 20 inch wheels that look really good, especially the gray color that they come in now. But there are some downsides to having wheels this big on a car this size. First, Tesla's website notes a 23 mile range difference between the long range dual motor and the performance, and the majority of that is because of these wheels. They're just big and heavy and not aerodynamic. So Tesla's advertising a range of 299 miles with the Model 3 Performance compared to 322 with the long range dual motor. And because of the bigger brakes on the Performance version, Tesla's smaller 18 and 19 inch wheels that you can get on the other versions of the Model 3 won't fit the performance. But there are some Tesla specific aftermarket wheels that are 18 or 19 inches that will fit over the bigger brakes on the performance. And unfortunately these big wheels have other implications such as number two on this list tires. The Tesla Model 3 Performance comes with Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are amazing high-performance summer tires. However, they're very expensive, and the price only goes up with bigger wheels. So these tires for the Model 3 Performance's 20-inch rims are currently $330 each, and that same tire on an 18-inch rim only costs $227 each, so over $100 less per tire. And these are low profile tires on the Model 3 Performance, so they look really good, but there's a lot of downsides associated with that as well. For example, without having that sidewall to absorb impacts, it leads to a rougher ride on the car. And that means that your tires, your wheels, and your suspension are all taking more of a beating while driving down a rough road. So if you are driving a Model 3 Performance, you need to seriously watch out for potholes and things like that, because there are a lot of instances of people damaging their wheels and tires on the Model 3 Performance. Now the other big problem with these tires is that they are max performance summer tires. These things are built for the track, and they are not built for cold temperatures whatsoever. And it would be very dangerous to try and drive on these tires in any temperatures below freezing. In fact, look at the warning that Tire Rack has has on their website for these tires. They say the Pilot Sport 4S excels in warm, dry, and wet conditions, so like all max performance summer tires, is not intended to be serviced, stored, nor driven in near and below freezing temperatures through snow or on ice. They also note that tires exposed to temperatures of 20 degrees Fahrenheit or lower must be permitted to gradually return to temperatures of at least 40 degrees Fahrenheit for at least 24 hours before they are flexed in any manner. And then they talk about the actual problem here, which is that flexing of the specialized rubber compounds used in these tires during cold weather can actually result in irreversible compound cracking. Basically what this means is that when these tires get cold, they get really hard and really brittle and can actually break apart almost like glass. And it actually blows my mind that you can go buy the Tesla Model 3 Performance in a cold climate in February and it's gonna come with these tires on it. And you might be voiding the warranty on the tires before you even get in the car. I actually asked a Tesla service rep about this at a showroom and they acknowledged that this was a problem and said that they recommend that anyone living in a cold climate getting the Model 3 Performance also should get winter tires. So basically, if you want the Model 3 Performance and you live in a cold climate or plan to ever drive somewhere in a cold climate, you're gonna need winter tires. And unfortunately, there aren't very many options for 20 inch low profile winter tires. You can buy a winter wheel and tire kit online from Tesla for the low price of $4,000. And the tire that comes in this kit is the Pirelli Winter Soto Zero, which if you wanted to buy individually and just use the one set of rims that you already have, they cost $442 each, meaning you're looking at almost $1,800 for a set of winter tires. 
The third problem with the Model 3 performance is the stiffer sport suspension that comes with it. Now in general, this is just going to make it more fun to go around corners, but it also leads to a rougher ride quality, so expect to feel those bumps in a Model 3 performance. This suspension also lowers the car from 5.5 to 5.1 inches of ground clearance, which may not sound like a lot, but ground clearance is very helpful in a daily driver, and every little bit that you can get helps, especially if you plan to drive this car camping or through the snow. So this sport suspension is nice to have, but if you're not going to the track, I don't think you're really going to utilize it. The standard Model 3 already has a very low center of gravity based on the battery placement below the cabin, so even with the standard suspension, it handles pretty good and is still a lot of fun on windy mountain roads. Alright, so the fourth reason that you should not buy the Tesla Model 3 Performance is the cost. The Performance currently costs $8,000 more than the long range dual motor. So let's talk about what you get for that $8,000. For one, you get 20 inch wheels and track tires, which look good and are good on the track, but we've already talked about the numerous downsides as well. You also get track mode, but if you're still watching, you're probably not going to the track. And then there's the bigger, higher performance brakes, which you only really need on the track and they just limit your wheel options otherwise. Your max speed is also increased to 163 miles an hour instead of 145 miles per hour, which no one really needs. You also get the lower and stiffer suspension, which you're probably not going to use if you're not going to the track. You also get a carbon fiber spoiler on the back. Have you seen the spoiler? You also get some sweet aluminum pedals inside the car, but I bought some of these on Amazon for $17 and you can't tell the difference. I'll link the ones I got down below in case you're interested. And then the biggest thing you get for that $8,000 performance upgrade package is the acceleration. 0 to 60 in 3.2 seconds. It's pretty sweet. Who doesn't want a car that fast? But if you drive with a lead foot, you're going to be replacing your tires quite often. Okay, now let's talk about the Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor. This car has the exact same motors and battery as the Model 3 Performance. The motors are just rated to a higher output in the Performance. In fact, Tesla used to offer a version of the Model 3 that was known as a Stealth Performance. It was a long range dual motor, except it had the acceleration of a Performance. And I really wish Tesla would still sell that car. The long range dual motor comes standard with 18 inch wheels with an option for 19 inch wheels. Both of these options are going to be more comfortable and more efficient. They may not look as good, but there are other options for around $1,500 for aftermarket wheels if you decide that you need to upgrade. Tires on these wheels are going to have a much larger sidewall, and thus they're going to be more comfortable and much less likely to cause damage when you hit a pothole. There are also a ton more options for tires with these wheels, and they are significantly cheaper than the tires for the 20 inch wheels on the Model 3 Performance. And these wheel options also come with all season tires. These may not be quite so exciting, but they're much more practical and efficient. And conveniently, they don't turn to glass in freezing temperatures. You also get the higher ground clearance, making the car more practical in snow and on dirt roads. And the long range dual motor is also $8,000 cheaper than the Performance, and is also going to be cheaper to operate over time based on the cheaper tire prices. And if you really care about acceleration in that 0-60 to 60 time, you can get Acceleration Boost, which is an option that Tesla rolled out at the end of 2019 for all long-range dual motor owners. And for $2,000, you can shave a half a second off of your 0-60 to 60 time, which brings the 0-60 to 60 time in this car down to under 4 seconds, which gets you about halfway between the long-range dual motor and the performance when it comes to 0-60 to 60 time, all from a simple downloadable update. Alright, so in conclusion, if money is no object, and you have a second car for utility, and you need the fastest model of the car out there, get the performance. If you're planning for this to be a daily driver, or to take on road trips, or if your budget is slightly stretched in this price range, then I'd recommend the Model 3 Long Range Dual Motor, or even a Model Y if you're okay with a crossover. The Tesla Model 3 Performance is truly a performance car, and I think it's a misconception to think that it's just the fastest version of the Model 3 with no sacrifices. In my opinion, I think there's a fairly considerable reduction in practicality with this version of the car. And when I dug into the details, I thought that the sacrifices of going to the performance were not worth it for anyone that was looking to use this car as their daily driver. And this was enough to convince me to get the Tesla Model 3 long range dual motor. And I eventually upgraded with acceleration boost to try to get as close as possible to that stealth performance that they used to offer. In the long run, the Model 3 performance is going to cost a lot more than just the $8,000 premium on sticker price. But with that said, that's all for today. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you're trying to decide between these two cars and what other factors you're considering or what swayed you toward making a decision. Regardless, thanks for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe if you want to learn more about living with an electric vehicle.